a quick mini lecture on the concept of ruling out. Um, when you start watching the range of motion videos that Jen has done, you'll notice that the first thing she does is rule out the joints above and below the actual joint that she's examining. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this because we don't really have any great resources um, to go to about this, so I thought it would be easier if I just explained it to you. Okay, so ruling out basically uh, eliminates the involvement of the joints above and below the joint that you are examining. So for example, if you're doing a shoulder examination, you want to eliminate the neck and the elbow from, uh, from the picture. So if someone is coming in with shoulder pain, you want to really make sure that it's actually coming from their shoulder and not their neck or their elbow. Um, a lot of muscles cross more than one joint and consequently they may drag other joints into people's pathologies. Um, so we want to make sure that nothing else is contributing to, say for example, that shoulder pain except for what's happening in the shoulder. Okay, so generally how do we rule out a joint? Um, let's use the shoulder as an example. Uh, we'll choose the joint above and below. And generally, you will choose two movements to do a rule out for the joint. And standard movements are flexion and extension. Um, there are a few exceptions, so I'm going to list them for you now. Um, when you are doing a shoulder assessment, you're going to need to rule out the neck. So rather than choose flexion and extension, you are going to flex the neck. And you're going to rotate the neck. And you'll apply overpressure in these directions to make sure that the person is experiencing no restriction and no pain. And if in fact they do have no restriction and no pain, then you can rule out the joint. So the second exception to the flexion extension rule would be when you are examining the shoulder as a rule out. third exception to the rule is when you are ruling out a hip um, and again the movements go you don't choose flexion and extension but rather you choose flexion and internal rotation of the hip to rule out the hip involvement. So again if those movements are pain free and the patient does, does not experience any restriction then you can actually rule out the joint. If in fact when you're doing a rule out of a joint and the patient experiences pain and restriction you will have to do a full examination of that joint to determine its involvement within the bigger.